right, 438. So let's talk about what we're doing next week real quick. We're going to do 4-3-A today. On Monday, we have off. On Tuesday, we'll do 4-3-B. On the block, we'll do 4-3-C with a review. And then on Friday, that will be our quiz. Okay? All right, 4-3-A. We're going to do more trig stuff, but we're going to extend it. Um, this is called the circular functions. So we're still going to be finding the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of angles, but now we're going to not just be acute angles, we're gonna have all the angles. Okay, so here we go, letter A. How many parts today? Uh, two parts, but they're lengthy, here we go. All right, so we're gonna talk about any angle. Now, angles, what we've done so far is just have limited them from zero to 90 degrees. <coughs> now we're gonna go all the way around in both directions. We're gonna have positive angles, negative angles, all kinds of angles, okay? So here we go. First of all, let's go ahead and rewrite this. Here's our Cartesian plane. And when we have an angle, we just make it easy on ourselves and we always start here on the positive x axis. That's called the initial side. So this is the initial side of our angle, okay? And if we want a positive angle, we will open this up, we've already talked about this, open this up in a counterclockwise direction, and we stop somewhere wherever we want to, and that would be our angle. Now, the place that we stop is going to be this side over here, bless you, and that is called the terminal side. Terminal side. Terminal means ending, right? That's why airports, they're called terminals. So you're going to end your life. All right, here we go. So <laughs> I'm terrified to fly. Any angle. All right, so if you go the other direction, though, so let's say that we have um, Cartesian plane here, and we decide to start right here, same initial side, but we go this direction. Um, over to here, for example, then this would be, theta would be a negative angle. You can have negatives. And then so you, you can... can go no. You can go both. Mm -hmm. And then you can also, you don't have to stop, you can keep going. So you can have your initial side here, and you can go around this thing a whole bunch of times, and then you have that angle. Crazy, huh? It is positive. That would be a positive angle way over 360. All right, so let's go ahead and um, maybe draw a couple angles, just for fun. What is that one? It's just a positive angle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how much it was, but here we go. So you're going to be able to draw angles in <clears throat> degrees and also in radians, okay? So you're going to start to get pretty good at this. Um, so let's go ahead. Yeah, bless you. Draw... Um, 195 degrees. Draw the angle. 195 degrees. We'll put that as A. We'll do a whole bunch of them. All right, so 195 degrees. Always start your angle in standard position. In other words, your vertex is at the origin and your initial side is on the x-axis, positive x-axis. And we're going to go 195. Now, you do not need to have a compass for this class, okay, or a protractor or whatever they're called. I don't even know. But we're going to take this 195, and we're going to approximate where we're at. We really are concerned about which quadrant we end up in. That's going to be our main focus. So, so where would 195 be? We're going to go over to 180 and go about 15. So right there. Okay? And what you need to do in order to show me that that's the correct angle is you need to draw an arrow here, right there, to show me that that's the angle in a positive direction that you want me to draw or that you're asked to draw. Okay? All right, let's do another one. Let's do a negative 95 degrees. Negative 95 degrees. Once again, I'll do it in a different color. We're going to start on the x-axis, the positive x-axis. And this time, we're going to go the other direction because it's negative. So negative 95 degrees. 
is going to be just 5 degrees past 90, so it's going to be pretty close to 90, and you have to draw your arrow going that way. I think to show that it's negative. Yep, exactly. Okay, so far so good. All right, let's do, um, let's do some, some radian measures now. <coughs> How about we're going to draw the angle 2 pi over 3. Do not spend your time converting that to degrees, okay? You need to get used to radian measure. Now, here's what you want to do. You want to think of this as two-thirds of a pi. And remember, pi is 180, okay? So this right here is pi, pi radians. Two-thirds of that would be if I had about one-third, two-thirds. Do you see how I just broke up the top half into thirds, mm -hmm. so then two-thirds would be this angle here. Start here, and you would go over to there. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but that, that's pretty exact. My thirds are good there, you see that? Wow. I know, I'm impressed with myself. Okay, and then let's do one more. Let's do, um, let's go negative five pi. Negative 5 pi. Let's see what that looks like if we were to draw that one. So start here on the x-axis again. We're going to go negative, so we're going in a clockwise direction. We're going to go negative 5 pi. So you can just count them. Go like this. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. That would be the angle. You would end right there. Okay? Now, you're probably looking at that going, okay, well, that angle is really the same thing as pi or 180, isn't it? I mean, that's, I mean, you have this is your initial side, that's your terminal side, and they're actually going to be related in a way. So let's talk about how they're related. All right, we have something called coterminal. Coterminal. Okay, co. Co is like you share something, right? We're co-champions. We don't like that. We like to be the champions, right? Or your co-captains. You got to share that with someone. That sucks. You want to be the captain, right? All right, but co means that they share stuff in common, right? So we're going to have some co-terminal angles. Cohabitate, habitat, habitate. I don't know. What? Negative yes. Mm -hmm. Co-terminal angles are going to be angles that have... And write this down because you're going to be required to know this one. They have the same initial and terminal side. Initial and terminal side, but different measures. But different angle measures, I guess we could say. Different angle measures. So they have the same initial, initial and terminal side, but different angle measures. I just showed you one up there that had the same starting side, the same ending side, but their angles were totally different. They were different measures, but they're called coterminal angles because they're going to come into play later on. <clears throat> All right, so for example, um, number two. Number two. Uh, we are going to find and draw. We're going to keep drawing a little bit here. We're going to find and draw a positive and a negative coterminal angle with the angle given. Coterminal angles. Okay? <gasps> Ooh, sweet updates. Or drugs. Drugs are ready. Drugs are ready. Yep, yeah, and it's a long weekend. Hope you ordered extra. Okay, here we go. Um, let's do 30 degrees. We'll do some degrees ones and then we'll do some radian ones, okay? So 30 degrees. We're going to find and draw a positive and negative coterminal angles. Now there's going to be a little formula that you can use, but I want, I want us to see it first. I want us to do it first, okay? So 30 degrees. We're over here. I'll draw it in blue. Here's our initial side. 30 degrees is kind of small, right? It's before 45. It's before the halfway mark. So it's about to here. There's 30 degrees. Now, <coughs> I have to find 
two more angles. Actually, there's an infinite amount of them. There is. But I have to find two, one positive and one negative, that are coterminal to that angle. Okay? So here's one of them. Yes? Not 180. 360. Yep. So when, let's do that one first. Okay, so I could start here, the same starting point, and then I could go past that one, but then come back to it. Yes, you could do that. You could keep adding 360 as many times as you want, and you'll get like an infinite amount of them, okay? So let's go ahead and write that one down. So my first coterminal angle would be 390. Mm -hmm. So it's 360 plus 30 degrees. So I went to my 30, but then I went all the way around again, 360, so I added it, okay? So that's one of them. But it says I have to find a positive and negative. So I don't want to keep adding 360 because that's just going to keep giving me positive ones. Yes, you guys, you're so good. So go here, and we're going to go around this way instead. Okay? These are coterminal. They have the same initial and terminal sides of your angle. So you can take 30 and subtract 360 from it. Mm -hmm. And that will give you negative 330. And those are your two coterminal angles. And there's, there's an infinite amount of answers to this, correct answers, okay? Now, the tricky thing is, is you're like, okay, so I'm just going to every time just add and subtract 360 degrees, and that'll give me both of them. Not quite, okay? Not quite. So let me show you. What if I gave you 740 degrees, and I asked you to find me a positive and a negative, okay? No. Nope. What you want to do is you want to, like, to get more, you can add 360, that'll be a positive one, but you're going to have to subtract 360 a few times until you get to a negative. You know what I mean? Is there another way to do that other than trial and error? Oh, that's not really trial and error. I mean, you could draw a picture. So 740, whoa, what is that? How many times around is that? Yeah? 360 and then, oh, sorry, sorry. 180? No. no. I would take 740 and I would subtract 360 from it and I get 380. Okay? And then I would subtract 360 from that and I get 20. So basically this, <clears throat> excuse me, is 360 plus 360 plus 20. So let's go ahead and draw that. Okay? 360, 360, and 20. So I would start here, my initial side. And I would go around 360, and then another 360, and then 20 degrees, a little bit, right there. So sometimes it's nice to draw it because then you can see what would a positive coterminal angle be. Well, you can do a couple of things. You can take 740 and subtract 360 off once, and that would be 380. So that would be a totally acceptable answer, okay? That would be the angle that starts here and only goes around one time past it and ends there, okay? Um, if you did that again and you said, okay, how about this angle that starts here and ends here? That's 20 degrees. Well, that's still positive, so I don't really want that one. Yeah, did I do it wrong? No, okay. You're just figuring out, okay. No, I do them wrong sometimes. Make sure you let me know. All right, 20 would also be a positive angle. I don't, I don't need two positives. I need a positive and I need a negative. That's what they're gonna ask for. So what would the, a negative be? Yes, so the negative one would be to start here and go this direction to there. So I can subtract off another 360. So the negative would be negative 340. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lots of ways to think about these. Okay? But be careful that, you know, you, you can't just add or subtract 360 because that's what people think. I mean, that's kind of the idea, but you have to add or subtract 360 a couple of times until you get negatives and positives. All right, now let's do some radians. So that was a nice little warm-up for you. Now let's do some radians ones. All right, so negative pi over 4. I want to find two coterminal angles, one positive, one negative, to negative pi over 4. Well, let's draw negative pi over 4. 
All right, start to get used to these fractions. It's a quarter of a pi. A pi is only half the circle, okay? So negative pi over 4 is going to be in what quadrant? The bottom, the bottom right, which is quadrant 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember the quadrants are 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so negative pi over 4 is going to go initial side here, terminal side there, and it goes in that direction, negative pi over 4. So let's go ahead and find two more, two coterminal angles that have the same measure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so one would be we could start here and go around this direction. Wouldn't that be a coterminal angle? Mm -hmm. Same side, same initial side, same ending side. Now, do you know what angle that is? Okay, well, let's check it out. We have one quarter, two quarter, three quarters, four quarters, five, six, seven. Yes, but we're gonna when it's in radians, you want to have your answer in radians. Okay, seven pi over four. Now I don't like to think of it that way. I don't like to count all of these pi's around. What I like to do is this: all the way around this circle is two pi, and I'm one quarter short of two pi. Well, what is two pi in terms of fourths? Eight pi over four and I'm one quarter shy of that, so my answer would be seven pi over four. So instead of going all the way around and counting how many quarters I have, I just subtract one quarter off of two pi. <coughs> Do you like fractions? No, okay, great. All right, and then the, um, another one, because we still need, so my answer is seven pi over four for my positive angle. I still need a negative one. My negative one is gonna go uh, start at the initial side, Go all the way around and end here, okay? So what that is, is for my negative angle, I have negative two pi minus pi over four, okay? Um, you could also think of that as you have negative pi over four and you're subtracting two pi from that. That'd probably be a better way to say it. But negative two pi is negative eight pi over four plus another negative pi over 4. So that would be negative 9 pi over 4. That would be my coterminal angle in a negative direction. Can we count them if we want? Can you what? Count them? Count them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might take a little while, though. Um, for these, you know how you add or subtract 360 for the other ones? These ones, you're going to add or subtract what? What's the same thing as 360 in radians? 2 pi. Two pi. Kind of the rule here. Add or subtract 362 pi. All right, should we do one more of those? Yes, let's do one more and then we'll move on. All right, letter D. Um, let's do 3 pi over 2. We want to draw and find two coterminal angles to 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2 is one and a half pies, right? So one and a half pies start at the initial side and go to pi and a half. That's three pi over two. So three pi over two is one and a half pies. So here's one pi to there and then a half more. Everyone's okay with that? Pretty good? Okay, and when you draw it, it's really nice because then you can kind of see better of what my coterminal angles would be like my coterminal angle over here to go in the negative direction would just be that. And what is that? Negative. Yes, it is. It's negative pi over 2. It's negative half of a pi. Okay? And then if we want to get a positive angle, we can start here and go around and then stop here. Perfect. Ooh, you even said it right, too. Take 3 pi over 2 and add 2 pi. But in order to add 2 pi, we need to be in the same denominator. So we really need to add 4 pi over 2 to it. That's 2 pi, right? You have to get common denominators. So you get 7 pi over 2, which is 3 and a half pi's, right? Yay. Love these. Yeah. Um, 
Um, oh, because you have to go past it and then around one more time. You're adding 2 pi to it. Because 3 pi over 2 is already positive, so you need to get the next positive one. All right, so let's go on and move on to part B. Halfway done. Yay, we've already gone 20 minutes. Wow. All right, we're going to evaluate trig functions with a point. I know. Evaluate with a point. Bouncers. Okay. All right. Um, when you're going to evaluate your trig functions with a point, sometimes you can't make a triangle, like the triangle that you think you need for the angle. So what you're going to do is you're going to use something called a reference angle in order to evaluate your trig function, your Sokotoa stuff. Okay. Um, your reference angle is going to be different for each quadrant. So let me show you. So let's go ahead and write all four quadrants down. Or um, we're going to do all four quadrants. So do four of them. All right. <coughs> so what's going to happen is I'm going to be given an angle. Um, and if it ends up in quadrant one, then that's going to be pretty easy. So this is theta. And if I end in quadrant one, then I don't really have to change anything. I don't have to fix anything at all. Okay? I can go ahead and drop a perpendicular down and make a right triangle in quadrant one using that specific angle theta. All right. The problem occurs is when you go into the next quadrants. So if I'm trying to evaluate, bless you, the sine of this angle over to here. Um, not quite. So here's theta. The reference angle to this is going to be this angle here. We call that theta prime. Okay? And what happens is you're going to, instead of take the sine of theta, you're actually going to find the sine of theta prime because they're equal to each other. Okay? Um, we're going to get into that later. Um, yes, for that one it is, but the next one's not going to be a supplementary. So, yeah. All right, because what you can do is you can drop a perpendicular down to here and make a right triangle. Okay? Your, your right triangles are always going to be made with the x-axis. You never draw them over to the y-axis. Okay? All right, so what happens if we're in quadrant 3? So you go quadrant 3. Let's say we're trying to find the sine or cosine or whatever of this angle all the way over to here. Bless you. We call that theta. We're trying to find the cosine of theta. What you want to do is you want to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay. Right there. And this angle inside of here we call theta prime. This angle right there. Okay. So theta prime is always going to be um, an acute angle, okay? And it's always going to be from your angle to the x-axis, and it's always positive. It's always positive, too. And then finally, over here, if you're in quadrant 4, and you go all the way around something like that, and we're trying to evaluate, uh, you know, our trig functions, bless you, at that angle, you want to use theta prime, which would be inside of here, because you would draw a perpendicular to there to make your right angle. So let's go ahead and see what this reference angle is. The reference angle is always positive. Okay, It's always a central angle. In other words, its vertex is on the origin. And it's always acute. So I'm going to show you how to do these problems with that. What are we on? Two, three, three? All right, here we go, number three. We're going to evaluate, evaluate 
um, all six trig functions. When the terminal side, when terminal side of your angle lands on this point. Let's give you like a nice, nicer one. Negative four, negative two. Evaluate all six trig functions when the terminal side of your angle lands on that point. Okay, let's draw a picture of this. Here we go. Give yourself a Cartesian plane and let's plot the point negative four, negative two. So one, two, three, negative four, negative two. So there it is. So let's see what this is asking for, right? Because I see a lot of frowns out there like, what in the world is this even asking? No, there's a lot. Yeah, don't say sorry. No, no, this is hard stuff. So what this is asking you to do is it's saying, here's your initial side, which is always going to be the initial side. And then the terminal side of your angle goes through this point right here. Okay? So this is your angle. So then you just follow the rules for quadratic Exactly. So I can't really make a triangle out of that huge angle, right? There's no way. I, I can't find sine, cosine, all that stuff. So what I do is I'm going to use its reference angle. And the reference angle is always found by dropping a perpendicular from that point to the x-axis, no matter where you're at. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this triangle right here. And instead of theta, I'm going to use the angle inside of there, which is theta prime. Okay? So let me kind of blow up that, that one over here. So it looks like this. Here's theta prime. So instead of finding the sine cosine tangent of theta, I'm going to find the sine cosine tangent of theta prime. And it's going to give me the same answer. Now, be careful here, because what are my sides? My sides of my triangle can be negative. They can? Yep, they can. Oh. This is negative 4, and this is negative 2. And then, um, mm -hmm. Because they're in quadrant 3, they're both going to be negative, and it's going to make a difference. And then the, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is always positive, though, always. So that would be 16 plus 4, square root of 20. So the hypotenuse would be 2 rad 5. Okay? And now this just brings us back to what we did yesterday. We're just going to evaluate all of them. So we're going to find the sine of theta, which is really the sine of theta prime, the reference angle. So the sine of theta is going to be uh, opposite over hypotenuse. And you can reduce that to negative 1 over rad 5. Um, it has to do with sine and cosine being cyclical. Like, we're going to talk about the graphs and stuff and how it just keeps, like, the same points keep happening. Okay. So it doesn't matter, like, if you're in quadrant 1, they're going to happen over here in quadrant 3, too. Okay. So, yeah, it's periodic. So, okay. And then cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of that. So negative rad 5 over 1. Or just negative rad 5, I should write. There you go. And then you can find the rest of them, too. So cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is negative 2 fifths, 2 rad 5, sorry. And then secant of theta would be the reciprocal of that. So that would be negative rad 5 over 2. And then two more. I know it's like six problems in one. Tangent's going to be nice, though. Tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is one half. And cotangent is going to be two. And later on, we're going to talk about why things are positive and other things are negative. So if you noticed, sine and cosine and their reciprocals, these are all negatives. And tangent happens to be positive in quadrant three. And so is cotangent. Bless you. All right. Um, I'm supposed to do one more thing with you, but we don't have time, do we? And even write, I even wrote on my paper, do not skip this. So you might have a little bit of struggle, but I think you're going to be okay. Can you record it and then post it? Oh, I could probably do that.